Hello and welcome to Music, Hope, Word, and Prayer. Uh, normally we do what the podcast title suggests. A bit of music, message of hope, a short prayer, and oftentimes a, a word for me. And normally it's a whole lot of words for me. But we thought, you know, you all are so busy here a couple of days before Christmas that we would do something a little different. So we're in the sanctuary, we're in four days. Uh, hopefully the place will be filled with Christmas Eve, candles will be lit, and uh, it's really a wonderful service. So we thought we would record this by video as well as by podcast, and uh, let's just point in this podcast to some treasures during the week that we're offering you, because you don't have a whole lot of time to listen to a whole bunch of stuff. So if you're in need of Christmas cheer, Nate certainly brought that this past uh, Sunday afternoon where you did your annual uh, holiday concert. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have links for you to check out as you're making last minute Christmas cookies or wrapping presents. I hope that you'll take a listen to uh, Nate's uh, concert. It was fun for us. How was it for you, Nate? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love sort of bringing in my friends from uh, the Nashville music community and bringing them into the EBPC community and having those worlds sort of collide. And um, yeah, my uh, performers really enjoyed it. I could see it on their faces and the way they performed. They were having fun. The the audience was having fun. So was there one moment in particular that you you enjoyed? I'm always interested from a, a, I get a chance to look at a crowd when I speak. You know, you're kind of enmeshed and and engrossed with the the performers and the the keys. Yeah. um, um, you know, just o- overall seeing the, the congregation loving it and then seeing some of the people that um, I even saw some of our youth bringing in some of their friends, which I always feel like is a great sign when our youth say, hey, we have a really cool concert going on at our church and they bring their friends from outside. So, yeah, that was, that was one of the things that made me really happy to see. I mean, there's something so powerful about music and especially when it comes to singing. Uh, and so you turn to the opening pages of uh, Luke's gospel and there's a whole lot of singing going on. Uh, There is the song of Elizabeth. There is the song of Mary, Mary's Magnificat. There's a song of Zechariah. And uh, uh, I don't want to put the link in this podcast episode around uh, just the singing that takes place and and, and, and Mary's Magnificat. Uh, It is Mary's song of praise. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his handmaid's loveliness. And holy is his name. At Mary's song of praise, and I wonder uh, amid all of the the grief and despair and the noise of war, if we're reading the news this week, I wonder if the cries of liberation and prayers can still ring down the streets of Bethlehem and out into Gaza, and is still valid for the women of Palestine and for the women who raise their children under duress of war and occupation. And I wonder if that song can be sung too of liberation for Israeli hostages and their families too long held now. That sounds sort of depressing, but I want to proclaim the hope that we do hold out and the joy. And joy has been our focus in this time, choosing joy. And I've said it's going to be an act of courage. And the um, the sub-theme has been, and a weary world rejoices. So we've been mindful of what practices over the last month that we can do to incite joy. Previous podcasts go into greater detail, and you can look at those. As pastor, I am mindful that a lot of you are experiencing a lot of anxiety and and uncertainty. And so against this backdrop of Mary's song and Zachariah's song, there's a, you know how I love uh, poetry, and there's a poem by Mary Oliver uh, that is, uh, I Worried is the name of this poem, and it seems especially appropriate. I worried a lot, will the garden grow, will the rivers flow in the right direction, will the earth turn as it was taught, and if not, how shall I correct it? Was I right? Was I wrong? Will I be forgiven? Can I do better? Will I ever be able to sing? Even the sparrows can do it. And I am, well, hopeless. Is my eyesight fading? Or am I just imagining it? Am I going to get rheumatism, lockjaw, dementia? Finally, 
I saw that worrying had come to nothing and gave it up and took my old body and went out into the morning and I sang. So if you're stressed this week, here's the practice. Sing like Zachariah, like Mary, like Mary Oliver, like the sparrows. It can be an antidote to feelings of worry and hopelessness. So tomorrow, Thursday, December the 21st, we're recording on a Wednesday. It's the longest night of the year. It's called the winter solstice. And so we put out a resource. We partnered with Sanctified Art and we put a little resource out there for you to, uh, if you are having a hard time grasping joy right now in this season because of loss or grief, it's something that we're putting out for you to, 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 to enjoy. Um, so we've included the link. So Nate, let's turn to, to Christmas Eve. That's just right upon us on this uh, coming Sunday. Talk to us about what we got going on. Yeah, so we have no mon uh, morning service, no 10 a.m. service, since Christmas Eve is falling on a Sunday this year. Um, but we will have our 3.30 barn service out by the barn. That's encouraged um, to bring young families to that, kids. But really all ages are certainly welcome. It's an informal service, about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so gather for that, and then you can also join us for our 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary. That'll be your traditional service, candle lighting, carol singing, and a message from John as well. So we hope to see you at one or both of those. I know you have a variation uh, of one of your favorites, Oh Holy Night. What's Christmas Eve without it? Huh? Yes, I do, I do it every year. It's one of my favorites. Um, this year especially, I think it fits really well. It has that line that we all know, but probably you can easily gloss over sometimes. It's the thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. And if you've been following along either on Sunday morning for our services or on our podcast, you know a weary world rejoices has been our theme. So that really hones in on that. And we've talked about that throughout Advent, from accepting that the world is weary and sometimes our lives can be that way, um, to talking about how community can help with that and talking about just uh, embracing that community and cultivating joy even in those times of sorrow. So, John, I know you've been working on your Christmas message. I'm sure it's just about there. Um, what can we expect from that? <laughs> well, well the, the, the title is We Make Room. And, uh, you know, there is a whole lot of material on the uh, edit, uh, the floor of the editing room as it, um, to, to borrow upon that saying, uh, the challenge is, is not to overload the message when the majority of people are just wanting to light a candle, sing Silent Night, and joy to the world, and to be on their way. The gospel story begins with uh, the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, but the gospel message is about the good news of the resurrection. Uh, and so it's hard not to try to put forth too much uh, in a Christmas Eve message is to, you, know, you want to kind of get into the Easter portion as well as the incarnation, the Christmas portion. And I, I think that was, you know, when, when I think about Handel's Messiah, he just sort of um, put, put it all in there, both the Christmas and then the Easter, you know, with the Hallelujah Chorus. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you, you, Nate, you were a composer, and, and, and it's, I, I guess when you compose, it's probably... You probably have to catch yourself from uh, not letting it just sort of get out of hand and explode in terms of what may be in your head of the largeness of, of, of the music that could be before you. Yeah, yeah, even when I wrote um, Appalachian Rhapsody, which is on uh, Americana Carols, which you can check out, uh, my, our Christmas album that came out a couple of years ago for the church. Um, even that, um, a rhapsody is something that usually incorporates a lot of different themes and styles of music, something like that, it always was held together by a certain uh, motif. So, yeah, I, I agree that when we're talking about the Christmas story, although we want to do broad strokes, I think that specificity is important to sort of tie everything together and hold it all together. So specificity, I hope that you can find the specificity, folks, of joy in your life. It can be kind of overwhelming with both the complexity of the world and joy can kind of be nebulous, but might you find um, some concrete examples? But what are those chords again? 
And so, what I've tried to do, and I think this will stay as we go into this Sunday, is the simplicity of a conversation between a mom and her four-year-old child to paint this picture of the notion of the incarnation. And what I hope to convey is that uh, Jesus' birth is a story about God making room for great joy to break beyond boundaries and for all to push past those times and the limits of our imagination. What I want to say, and I'm not sure how to say it with the economy of words, is to guard against losing our tolerance for vulnerability and the danger when we harden ourselves too much. Because when we harden ourselves too much, it becomes a challenge to make room for God who wants to make room for us and to make room for others. So I'll leave you with this thought. How are you making room this season? And how can you make room for God to accompany you through whatever comes in this season? And how can you make room for joy. That's a lovely progression right there. So here's the prayer for today. Dear God, may we go into a weary world and may we speak tenderly, doing the good thing that is yours to do and choosing connection. And may we hold on to hope and remember that Christ took on flesh for me, for you, for the other. And you and me and we are God's beloved. So with that in mind, may we go rejoicing through our day because the world so needs it. And we do too. Amen. Thank you for listening to music, hope, word, and prayer. And if you're listening to this, hope you might find your way online at ebpctn.org or in person here at the corner of Wilson Pike and Concord Road, either at 3.30 or at 5 p.m. <laughs>